Hey guys, it's James, and we all like the feeling of receiving dividends. Getting a monthly, quarterly, or annual dividend feels great, and there's just something about a monthly dividend paying stock that feels like your portfolio is growing faster than a quarterly or annual dividend. As that dividend is deposited into your account, your account is going to grow faster compared to a quarterly or annual dividend deposit. So I wanted to sit down and create a spreadsheet. So I wanted to see if there was any mathematical advantage to having a weekly or monthly paying dividend compared to a quarterly or annually. So across the board, we're gonna keep all of the numbers the same. We're gonna keep an initial investment here in line nine on January 1st, and we're gonna go out 52 weeks and see how the portfolio grows and see how the dividend is added into the account. We're gonna start with the same amount with the same annual dividend yield. So let's say hypothetically we had XYZ company and let's say the growth for that company was 10% annual growth and for these less than annual payout dividend payout periods we will take that annual growth and normalize it to a weekly growth so we'll take 10 percent and normalize that out for an entire 52 week period and then same thing for the annual dividend yield let's say our fund has a three percent dividend yield which is very common for a lot of large value stocks let's say the stock price is sitting around fifty dollars and the number of shares that we own is 50. So let's start here in week one. So what we have here in each of these different buckets, we have a starting investment of $2,500 and the dividend starting is going to be zero. So we'll go ahead and just add that in. So in week one here, we'll go ahead and use the compound interest formula for a 10% annual growth over the course of just one week. And we'll see what we have for, for each of the dividend payout frequencies. So now we have our one week growth. What I did was take the annual 10% and divide it by 52 to give me a weekly growth. So now that we have that weekly growth down, we're gonna add in the dividend effect. So now we have the dividend for our weekly dividend paying fund. And in the monthly, quarterly, and annual frequencies, we don't get that dividend until month one, until quarter one, until the end of the year. So let's go ahead and go to the first month and see what we have for our weekly compared to our monthly growth. And right here, what we're doing is our adding, we are adding our value of our total portfolio value to our dividend, and then gonna compound that. So now we have our values at the end of January. On January 31st, our weekly paying dividend fund is gonna be 25.23, with $1.46 being paid out weekly. And for our monthly dividend paying fund, with these numbers, we have inputted at a 3% annual yield. $2,500 is gonna give us $6.30 for a dividend monthly dividend payout. And this has not been compounded yet. The first week of the next month, we're gonna have that added into it. So these three values, these three portfolio values are all gonna be exactly the same after month one. So I'm going to go ahead and drag all of this down to after quarter one and see how we stand in each one of the dividend payout frequencies. So here's what we got after the first quarter. Our weekly portfolio, our weekly dividend paying portfolio is at 2581, slightly ahead of the monthly, and the monthly is slightly ahead of the quarterly, and the quarterly is slightly ahead of the annual dividend paying out fund, all with the same annual dividend yield. Let's go ahead and pull down all the way until the end of the year and see what the final value of each dividend paying frequency portfolio is gonna be. So we get to the end of the year here and it looks like the weekly paying dividend fund is gonna give you more money than the annual fund. But what we don't see is on the next week, week 53, we have to add the dividend to the portfolio value to have a fair shake for each one of the different dividend paying frequencies. So let's go ahead and add those, those up and see what we get. So here we are with 
the very next week of the year and we see that the weekly dividend paying fund is not too far off uh just slightly a dollar over the annual paying fund on the graph here with the blue being the weekly the red being the monthly the yellow being the quarterly and the green being the annual here in the lines down here every time a dividend is being paid out you can see that the lines all converge to the same. You can see after the first quarter here that the quarterly paying fund reaches back to the levels of the weekly fund. And then you see on the second quarter and the third quarter and the red is a little difficult to see because it's all kind of mushed together. But the red converges back to the blue. And then at the very end of the year, the, the next week actually, uh, week 53, the first week of the next year, it all converges back to the same level. So you can see that there is such a small insignificant difference compared with a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually dividend frequency payouts. Now again, it all depends on your investing strategy. You might want to have a weekly paying dividend type of portfolio. Unfortunately, the amount of weekly paying dividends ETFs or stocks out there is very limited. So you might be losing some of the upside or the growth potential if you were to invest in more of a standard quarterly or annually paying fund. And you can see with these small numbers here, you are actually losing out on a little bit of uh, uh, some of your dividend payout because the dividend is compounded at such a small level compared to the end of your portfolio value. For instance, at the end of the year, your portfolio value is $2,845. But since we compounded weekly, we compounded the 3% annual dividend yield on weeks one, two, three, four, and so on. And we had a smaller portfolio value, so we're receiving less dividend at the beginning of the year. So at the end of the year, this annual dividend paying fund is gonna pay you a larger dividend because it's being paid out at a larger portfolio value. Let's say we have, uh, let's say we invested in a fund like VOO sitting around four to five hundred dollars. Let's say it is 450 and you owned 10,000 shares. You have a portfolio of four and a half million. And here we are at the end of the year with a four and a half million dollar starting value or you're in your portfolio. If you compound, you let it compound for an entire year on a weekly basis of 10% growth with a 3% dividend yield. The numbers are actually coming out where the weekly fund is two to $3,000 ahead of the annual fund. Now at that point, two to $3,000 is not gonna make it or break it. At this point, you might want to be investing in the weekly or the monthly monthly fund due to the uh, consistency of the dividend payout and it does look like you are ahead slightly with this with these type of numbers. If you like spreadsheet calculations like this, I have a ton more spreadsheets over on my Patreon. If you guys want to support the channel, head over there. You can have access to this spreadsheet and you can play around with the numbers yourself. I also have a few other dividend calculators over here on this tab as well. And with that, thanks for watching.